How is it that two people who are so clearly meant for each other can't just see it, admit it, get over themselves and do something about it? Shirley Temple, hold the temple. <clears throat> Spinelli, there is vodka in here. All right, I know that you don't want to be my friend, but right now, it looks like you kind of need one. So, what do you say we put our non-friendship on hold? While a non-friendship detente is tempting, the cause of my upset is of an intimate nature, and to share that with someone who shuns my intimacy seems counterproductive. Needed to talk to Mac about Kate's bachelorette party anyway. You know, Jason and Sam are getting a divorce instead of celebrating their anniversary. I'm sorry, Spinelli. I know you really care about them. I mean, I, I do too. I just, I don't get to see Sam as much as I would like to, but I know if I ever needed anything, she would always be there. And Jason is. Jason, I know I always say he's a blockhead, and he is, but he's also very nice and surprisingly sensitive. He also has major communication issues, and now he's breaking up with the one person he manages to communicate with. It's so sad when two people who are obviously meant to be together can't work it out. It just seems so wrong, especially with everything that Jason is trying to do for her. What's he trying to do for her? Jason is Great. keeping himself in top shape, and Sam should appreciate that. Isn't Jason already in great shape, I mean, in his line of work? Yes, indeed, he exhibits formidable physical prowess. All the better to act heroically on Sam's behalf. Well, I guess being Sam's hero wasn't enough, which is sad. I mean, I, I knew that they were fighting, but I always thought Jason and Sam would make it work. Yeah, as did I. Their love for each other was without question. Maybe that disaster of a wedding ceremony I threw them was a bad omen. <laughs> I'm really hoping that the wedding I'm throwing Sunny and Kate turns out to be much better, but with the choices Kate's making, I'm beginning to wonder. I mean, I am all for loosening up, but if she's not careful, she's gonna end up with a tacky nightmare right out of a reality television show. But this is my one and only chance to get reinstated as Kate's first. Okay, at the risk of jeopardizing our current ceasefire, this isn't about you. I know. I am trying to be a better and more generous person. So even though I do have a teeny tiny ulterior motive when it comes to planning Sunny and Kate's wedding. I feel like I'm doing a good deed. And if Kate wants to have her bachelorette party here... Wait, wait. Blue tables and hall? That doesn't really seem like Miss Howard's style. I know. She said she's uh, embracing her Connie side now that she's all integrated or put back together or whatever. Well, I hope she doesn't embrace too much. Her Connie side hurt a lot of people. This to go well for Kate. I mean, my record as a wedding planner is kind of spotty. <laughs> it's weird to think that the only good ceremony I was a part of was our non-wedding. Do you remember how much fun we had going around looking for the perfect place to have a ceremony? You you even took me to that Zen garden. Yeah, I just assumed that you were being extra picky as a stalling tactic. That too. I was afraid to get married. I was even more afraid to tell you. So I psyched myself into walking all the way down that aisle and then you sweetly refused to marry me. We obviously weren't meant to be married to each other. Yeah, that must be it. Mac is working in the late shift, so I'm gonna have to call and book the bachelorette party over the phone, and I have a million things I need to handle for the wedding, so you can relax. Our timeout is over. We can go back to being non-friends. Those are the rules, right? We can't be friends unless we're each in a relationship? Right. Please.